I told you before the break, Bitcoin has grown from the $1,000 at the beginning of this year to, to about 15,000 US dollars now. So just in October, one Bitcoin cost around 60,000 rand. It now hovers around, listen to this, 250,000 rand. Now, similar to markets, the Bitcoin response to developments and the, the recent surge in, is speculated to be due to the announcement by two global markets that have announced their intention to legitimize it as an asset class for mainstream investors. What does that all mean? I don't know. We've got somebody in studio who's going to help us. Uh, Mpo Degada, he is the author of How I Became a Millionaire at 21, Bitcoin is here in studio with us. Good to have you. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so, so you're a millionaire. <laughs> cryptocurrency millionaire, A yes. cryptocurrency millionaire. Definitely. But does that translate into being a millionaire? It does. Yeah. It does. What is cryptocurrency? So basically what we're looking at, we're looking at currency with specific encryption techniques that do two things. The first thing is they actually verify that you actually have got the currency. And the second thing they do is they help facilitate the transfer between two people and they help encrypt it, meaning no one can hack you, um, no one can duplicate the, the, the method of payment that you're using. So it's basically an encrypted currency. A safer digital currency. Yeah. So you, I mean, you tw you're 23 years old. Yeah. Now. So you, f you first sort of bought into to Bitcoin at around the, what were you? You 21 at the time? 20. Yeah, 2021. Yeah. 2021 at the time, and you got it while it was still sort of on the rise. I did. Yeah. What did you buy it? How? What made you interested in Bitcoin? So what happened is somebody asked me to buy them Bitcoin, and um, I bought it, and overnight the price jumped. So I did my research as to what's actually going on here. Started studying it. Started looking. At materials involved in it, started looking at blogs where people speak about it. And I mean, what, what interested me most was the technology behind it. Now, Bitcoin is run through blockchain technology. And when okay. you look at blockchain technology, it's sort of like the future of all transactions. It's a piece of technology which allows everyone to see transactions happening out on board. Yeah. So for example, things like corruption are stopped through blockchain because everything is visible to everyone. Your, your blockchain cannot be hacked because the transactions are actually linked to each transaction that has ever happened. So it's those sort of attributes that, that interested me, the, the technology behind it, the speed behind it. We're looking at the future of currency. Yeah. Um, and that's how I got interested and so the interest has grown. Now, the, the one thing is people think, okay, so there's no way I can afford one Bitcoin. I mean, when we're talking, I, I quoted a price of 250,000 Rand. Is that about right? Yeah, that's For about one right. Bitcoin. For one Bitcoin, yeah. But if you don't buy one Bitcoin, you buy... Uh, portions of a Bitcoin. Definitely, yeah. So how, how does that work? I mean, just explain this to me. So basically, when we think about cryptocurrencies, we're not only talking about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the most valued one. I mean, we have a cryptocurrency like Ripple, which is three rand, four rand for one Ripple. But when we buy Bitcoin, you don't, buy, you don't have to buy a complete Bitcoin. You can buy 0 0.1 of a Bitcoin. Okay. So you can buy a specific portion of a Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. And now does that, what does that mean to me? So I own 0 0.1 of a Bitcoin. So what? What, what? what then? What? You've got to help me out here because I think a lot of people are very confused by how this works. So I decide today that I get off here. I want to go and buy Bitcoin and invest in it. So is it an investment or is it pretty much so now I use this as, a, as internet currency? I can buy things for it. Well, you definitely can transact using it. In South Africa, I mean, takealot.com, pick and pay, they've yeah, got a I've trial system. This. So they accept Bitcoin as a method of payment. Okay. You can even get a card to use your Bitcoin. So you can swipe your Bitcoin or swipe your card and then the, the, the transaction will happen through Bitcoin. So you can do that. Or you can look at just holding it and assessing the value to say, I back this technology. And because of this technology that's involved in, because I see it as a future, I'll just hold it. Yeah. Sort of like gold. So it plays both as dual a currency. And at the same time, it plays both as a technological advancement that's happening that people look at and say, look, I'm seeing value in this. Yeah. A lot of people also see it as a potential bubble and something that could burst very, very soon because I think some people are very, very nervous, even though um, cryptocurrencies, we, we're talking of a, perhaps a combined value of around about four billion dollars. I mean, that's, that's larger than the GDP of, of, a, of a lot of countries. <laughs> um, but some people say that there is no backing. Um, where do we go? How do you allay fears and say there is a future in Bitcoin or in cryptocurrencies? You know what it is? When, when Bitcoins were actually started, when cryptocurrencies were actually started, people were saying, we want to create something that will be driven by demand and supply of the people that are involved and not by a specific political power. So people were trying to move away from your funds sitting with 
for example, the Zimbabwean dollar, sitting with the government and the political situation happening, and that values what your currency is worth. So now they wanted to move over to something that's less decentralized, that's affected by demand and supply for the people who are within the actual space. Yeah. So that's what they looked at, the demand and supply within the people in the actual community. So it becomes a global market instead of a country uh, governed market. And that's why we say it's decentralized and it's global because anyone in any country can participate in Bitcoin. Yeah. So that's what people are looking at. And it's, it's driven by demand and supply. And I mean, in an economy, you want the instruments of demand and supply to play their role, whether the demand is high, whether the demand is low, whether the supply is high or low. You want those instruments to play out and you want it to be fairly governed by the people involved in the system. Okay. And that's what Bitcoin offers people. Yeah. A system where people are involved and they get to make a choice through their decision to say, look, I want to be in or not. If you invest in Bitcoin, so now as you have done, so give us your lesson. So you decided that you were going to go this route, the cryptocurrency route, you were going to invest in. Obviously, there's about 900 cryptocurrencies. We keep on emphasizing Bitcoin because as you yourself have said, it's probably the most valuable and, and well-known at this stage. Um, but if I want to start, what is a good way to begin? All right. Um, well, I'd, I'd say you, the first thing you need to do, I've got a website called www.investinfuturecurrency.com. Mm -hmm. And under that website, there's a tab there called Coin Market Cap. Yeah. And what that gives you, that gives you information on all the altcoins that are available. Now, when you go about investing in cryptocurrencies, you look at what type of solution is this specific cryptocurrency solving. Because different cryptocurrencies are made to solve different solutions. You look at the market cap. You look at what, what are the future advances for it. And you take it from there. There's a coin developed by one of the guys who actually helped develop Google. So he branched away from Google and he started a coin called Litecoin. And now he's looking at partnerships with other retailers. So you'd look at a coin at that and say, do I see value in this? If this guy's involved in Google and this is his plan and this is how the coin is being developed, you assess that situation and then you go forth and you do investment based on that. Litecoin, as we speak, um, last week it was about 1,300. And because of the potential partnerships that he's got lined up, Microsoft is one of the people that are saying, look, we're going ahead and we're investing in this cryptocurrency. Currency. Today it's at around 4,000 wow. because of the value of technology. So I always say cryptocurrencies are likened to the digital age of currency. You've got something that's coming on board, that's solving solutions that we've had for so many years. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it and you say, is this actually solving the solution that I want? And that's how people are thinking about it, as something of a solution. I once spoke in Zimbabwe, and when I got there, I was so surprised. There's a petrol station in Zim that only accepts Bitcoin. Wow. So they say, we're not accepting anything else. We also, we're only accepting Bitcoin. And they buy their petrol to Bitcoin. So in a country where it seems like their currency has failed, Bitcoin comes in as a solution. So it's those technological advances that are causing people to say, look, we want to know what this is and we want to see, can we actually use it as a solution? Dubai has now got a minister of blockchain, which is essentially a minister of Bitcoin. Yeah. So even governments are looking so at it to say, is going here's nowhere. the solution. And well, it's eight o'clock, so I can't, <laughs> I can't ask you another question. But the reality is, is that it is here to stay. This is the future. And it is now. Most You've got to, if, you, if you miss out on this boat, then uh, you could be You've missing really out on out. one big profitable boat that you could make your fortune off. All right. Well, I think I'm going to go and take a look at this. And perhaps, I know it might be uh, a little bit late, but maybe I can become a millionaire soon. And then I can, <laughs> I can run away and become a, a Bitcoin specialist. Mpo uh, sharing his personal experience about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Thank you so much for talking to us. All right. Let's, uh, let's get our news at